are in listen only mode. All right, we are, everybody's just now showing up, so that's uh, that's great. Um, <clears throat> See them all starting to pop on the audio. <laughs> I'm going to wait just one more minute to, until everybody gets on there. Looks like they're all popping in now. All right. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. I just want to say good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for joining us today on this uh, this install based short tail webinar where we're going to be talking about the administration side of things uh, going into director and diagnostic and monitoring. My name is Jeff Isaac. I am the enterprise account manager here at Vertex Consulting. And joining me on today's webinar, we have a special guest, Dean Moore, our area sales engineer from Shortel. Uh, before we get started, just want to share a few quick housekeeping items with you. Uh, we have all participants muted right now. Uh, we will have a question and answer session at the end. Uh, but if you have a question, please go ahead and type it in either the chat window or the question window. And throughout today's webinar, we'll be monitoring those and we'll answer the questions when we uh, when we can get to them. Also, we are recording today's webinar, so if you need to reference it later, it will be on the Vertex website soon. And finally, after the event, you will get a survey from us. We want to make sure that uh, we're gonna, the events like this are valuable to you, so please share your candid feedback with us. That being said, for every survey that gets returned, we are going to put your name in a hat and draw you one winner for a $25 Amazon gift card. Uh, the goal of our webinar series is to show you some things that will help you and your organization get the most out of your Shortel system and to make sure that you're aware of things Vertex can do to add value to our partnership. And so to do that today, uh, we've got a, uh, just a brief agenda. So we're just going to kind of give you a welcome and show you, uh, talk a little bit about what's going on here at Vertex. And then uh, we will go into a deeper dive with diagnostic and monitoring with Dean Moore in version 14.2 on Shortel. And then uh, finally, we'll open it up for a question and answer session. And you can ask any questions you want. We'd be happy to answer those for you. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. A little bit about what's going on here at Vertex. Uh, in May, we received the Shortel World Class Customer Service Award. This is the, the customer service award that we received for the 26th straight quarter for being in the top 1% of customer service within Shortel. Uh, we are very proud of this. We do make sure that we try to service our customers the best we possibly can. And we appreciate your feedback on those surveys. You help us get those awards. And uh, we want to make sure that we're taking care of our customers all the time. Uh, Shortel 14.2 is out. Uh, we are currently still upgrading clients. We have some that we're, you know, we're moving on now. We've got a couple more scheduled in the next few weeks as well. We're going to continue to roll that out and get everybody up to the latest versions so they can enjoy the diagnostic and monitoring uh, just like everybody else that's already on 14.2. Also, we are looking for two positions currently at Vertex. They are based in our Ocala office. We are looking for two more experienced network engineers. If you know of anybody that would be looking or interested in a position like that, please send them our way. We're always looking for great uh, great candidates and great people to work with, uh, not only our staff here, but also all of our customers. And then uh, I wanted to go ahead and go through a quick recap on the quickest way for you to get support here at Vertex. Uh, some of you already know, and it isn't necessarily news, but there are also some uh, new customers and first time attendees, so I want to make sure that uh, we get you guys that information. The quickest support is to call our main phone number, 352-401-0909, or you can call us toll-free at 877-VERTEX, that's 877-837-8357. Once you're in, just select the prompt for support and you'll go right to our help desk. You can also email help at vertex.com, that will get you uh, an automated ticket creation. Those are for those uh, items that you may be able to wait a little bit to get serviced. If you have an after hours issue, or if you have a service emergency or a network outage, please call and choose the menu option for hard down. Leave a detailed message and don't forget to tell them the best number to reach you. You'll be called back by one of our on-call support team. If you have any questions about that, just reach out to your account manager. You can also use our web-based support system if you prefer. That system can be accessed from our web page or by visiting http colon backslash backslash connect.vertex.com slash support. If you don't have a login, let us know. We will definitely go ahead and get that to you. And finally, our next webinar is scheduled <clears throat> for Thursday, July 3rd. 
at the same time, 10 o'clock. If there's something that you would like us to go over for that webinar, please let us know. You can email us at sales at vertex.com. This webinar that's going to be coming up on July 3rd will be for end users, uh, some power tips and tricks in Shortel Communicator. And uh, we want to make sure that we're getting you know the best use of your time. So there's things that you have questions about. We'd be happy to cover those during that next webinar. And then now I'd just like to keep moving on and let you know about some of the different things that Vertex does just in case you're not aware. If you look at this slide here, we do a lot more than just short tail. We are a complete end-to-end, -end, best of breed solution provider. We definitely want to help you. If you have questions about anything, we'd be happy to provide you information. But we do different things. We've got disaster and recovery. So up in the top right, you've got Quorum, one of the best solutions I've ever seen. We are a VMware partner. We have life-size video conferencing, AdTran, Blue Socket, Blue Socket Wi-Fi, excuse me, Barracuda, XIO, SAN Storage, Microsoft Office 365. Talari Networks is something that's new. If you have questions about that, that is a uh, an interesting interesting opportunity or product there for you to have your bring your own bandwidth and uh, have it tested out to see what's the fastest way to get to where you need the uh, information to go. So that would be something we would love to to go over with you. Uh, and we do have some free offers that are uh, available this quarter as well. This slide is not on here. But we are offering free disaster recovery assessment through the end of the third quarter. Actually, if you have a question about whether you're prepared for hurricane season, let us know. We'd be happy to provide you a disaster recovery assessment on where you stand and what you can do to uh, to make sure that you are prepared in case those disasters do hit. So now I want to go ahead and uh, keep moving forward here. I'm going to pass control over to Dean. Dean Moore is going to go through some diagnostic and monitoring a deep dive in Shortel uh, Director for you. So Dean, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to you and go ahead and take it away. And uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I'm sorry you, I, I, had you, I had you muted there. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, okay. Perfect. All right. <laughs> you missed <laughs> my great that. witty introduction there. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks, everybody. Thanks, Jeff, for having me. Everyone should be seeing my screen right now, hopefully. And I um, appreciate uh, Jeff and the whole team uh, at Vertex having me on. Thank you all, by the way, everyone listening, for being customers. We definitely appreciate um, your loyalty to Shortel and your uh, adopting our solutions. So thank you for that. Uh, today I'm going to talk about get rid of that window there the um, diagnostics and monitoring capability that we just released within our director software. So the screen that you're looking at right now should look pretty familiar to you. That's the quick look screen that's been available um, forever, really, on director. And this is where you're brought to when you first log into the system as an administrator. And you're probably all, or at least most of you, I assume, are familiar with the look here where it's given you uh, some visual indications as to what's going on. <clears throat> the diagnostics and monitoring capability really takes this screen and the quick look environment to a whole new level, both in terms of functionality as well as uh, what I think is a cleaner, more intuitive graphical interface that you'll see in a moment. When you uh, first log in, there's two ways you can actually get to um, diagnostics and monitoring. One is You'll notice at the top of the uh, window here, right above the quick look uh, data, you see a go to diagnostics and monitoring. So the quickest way, frankly, is just to click that, and it'll pop up a new window. The other way, though, is by lever leveraging the frame on the left-hand side. And under the maintenance tab is where you'll find diagnostics and monitoring. So that's um, what I'll click on now, and it's going to pop up a new window. So the window you see here, this is the new diagnostics and monitoring tool. It always does pop up a new uh, window in whatever your default browser is. But we recommend Internet Explorer, of course. Um, the dashboard that you see here, you see a variety of information presented to you. And the idea with this initial dashboard is just to give you high-level performance information so you can tell at a glance, is your system trending the way it has been in the past, or is there something anomalous going on? The drop box in the top left here allows me to select the time parameter that I'm most interested in. So if something unusual maybe is going to happen in this morning, I might want to drop my time frame down to an hour so I can see what's been going on here recently. <clears throat> what I had it set out already was 12 hours. Uh, in this case, I'll also pull up the last seven days just so you can get a longer term view. So as soon as I select that, it pulls in the new data. The various uh, tables that you're seeing, the heading is right in the top left of each one. 
And as you can tell, I've got information that tells me about the total number of calls going through my system, the call volume. But the comment I made a moment ago about the user friendliness of it is we try to keep uh, both colors and shapes as differentiators. So um, here with my simple bar graph, I've got bad calls as well as good calls available. Green is obviously good. And at a glance here, I can tell that I had no bad calls. There would be a little red line or a bigger red section, depending on if I had a major issue and had several calls that were considered, quote, unquote, bad. Um, and I would be able to drill down on them. I'll do the drill down here in a moment, but I'll touch on also the rest of these uh, different tabs here just to let you know what they're showing at a high level. Um, the call quality is pretty much analogous to the um, good and bad calls because what we're doing, what we're determining is good and bad is really related to the MOS score that we're calculating. The MOS stands for mean opinion score, and that's an industry standard in the voice world to say what's considered a, an acceptable call, what's marginally acceptable, and what's completely unacceptable. <clears throat> and um, right now we're seeing we're seeing very good toll quality range across the board for all of the calls on the system. This happens to be a small test system um, that we're, I'm just leveraging here internal to Shortel, and so ideally everything should be uh, should be perfect because it's in a lab environment. Um, you notice as well we've got uh, different color and shapes associated with what's the average and what's the worst. Um, everything it, it, the average sort of across the board, so there's no worst case uh, that's popped in. And we, instead of the color, or in addition to the color change, purple and blue here, if you can make those out, we also have shape differences as well. So the, the bar for worse would be square, um, and then it would be uh, circular in indications for the average, as you can see here. And uh, again, very good quality MOS scores. <clears throat> Notice when you hover over any of the data points, it gives you the breakdown of, of what the time range is and what the MOS score was in more detail in case you wanted more granularity than just looking at the column on the left-hand side. I can see bandwidth utilization by site as well, so that can give me a heads up and a trending to know um, do I potentially need to upgrade some WAM links because I'm getting a lot of internal calls between site A and site B, and maybe I'm starting to bump up against my 80% threshold for what my bandwidth utilization is. Where this bandwidth number comes from, by the way, is, is not the true bandwidth at the site. So for instance, if you had a 10 meg Metro Ethernet circuit connecting your locations, it, it's tied to when you define the site, there's a parameter in Shortel that says how much bandwidth is available by it for voice. So on that 10 meg um, Metro Ethernet connection, if you, had to, if you were to say that 3 meg is available for voice calls, that's sort of all that Shortel will see, and that's what the 100% mark would be. So if it reached 100%, it would be taking all um, 3 meg that you have allocated aside uh, to Shortel for voice calls. And again, I can get detail here. I'll, I'll sort of show the drill down, but in this case, I'll hover over the bandwidth, and I can tell that my average and max range were for an average of 1%, a max of about 16% over that time range. So again, I can get more granular detail just by hovering over this high-level graph. The trunk usage one, this is one that we've been really waiting for. We've had trunk reports available, as I'm sure many of you know, in our historical reports but it doesn't really give you a total usage. You would have to export that data, do some massaging in Excel or some other program to really understand the simultaneous port usage. So this is something that customers had asked for for a while, and I'm really glad that that one's in here, particularly since asking for a trunk study from your carrier can be a process that can take, you know, at a minimum a few weeks, um, if not a few months, to actually get something like that back. So this, in this case, we actually get... Um, you know, information about what is my actual trunk usage. The percents here are all in a given trunk group. This is by trunk group. How many trunks am I using? What percent of trunks are full at any one time? And you can see here the different trunk group keys um, that are designed for each site. Here in this system, this is a little internal test bed, so we're not actually making any real trunk calls. So some of the data here is all zeroed out, really. Um, but the idea would be in your environment, you would have various bar graphs for each of your sites and anything in the yellow area would be something you potentially wanted to look at to see if that was just a, a blip that probably won't reoccur or whether you're trending upward and anything in the yellow area you might want to uh, potentially look at um, either leveraging trunks at other sites, hopping across your WAN and grabbing dial tone elsewhere, or maybe putting in additional trunks at whatever sites are getting into that yellow range. Um, CPU usage is pretty straightforward. That's basically the, um, of all the short tail processing components, the shore gear appliances, as well as things like the SA100 appliance that provides instant messaging conferencing, 
or even the server environments as well. It tells you what, what are uh, CPU loads. So for instance, if you had a short gear appliance that was running many hunt groups and doing monitor extension buttons, um, and there is a lot of call volume on there, you might see that that particular short gear is getting into the 40, 50, 60 percent range sometimes in terms of its CPU processing. Just another indicator. And then the last one on the left is really feature usage. So it allows you to see um, what kind of advanced features are being used. In this case, this was probably a voicemail call. I'm going to click on that one to show you the drill down. And it will pull in and, and show me that particular use, uh, that particular feature that was used. In this case, a call that was routed to voicemail. Again, in your environment, you're going to see a lot more activity. Features are basically con are considered anything that's beyond a normal phone call. So things like conferencing, things like accessing voicemail, uh, things like accessing auto attendance. Those would all be considered features and would show up here. So you can get a feel for what your feature usage is um, in that environment. Where that can come into play is if you are very heavy voicemail and auto attendant users, you can see how many simultaneous streams are going on hitting your headquarters or DBS servers uh, utilizing those kind of resources. I'm going to go back to that topology, or sorry, back to that dashboard view uh, and show you a drill down of what we can do for um, the calls. Because this is a very effective way for the IT organization to identify from here at a high level um, that there may have been a couple bad calls and be able to easily and intuitively drill down all the way to the point where we can do a packet capture of that particular call. So here I'll just take a, a generic day here on the 15th uh, where there were 675 calls. Click on that and it's going to bring me into this next screen that you see which is going to be a, a listing uh, of all the calls that uh, happened on that particular day that we just clicked on. You'll notice I've got, in this case, it's broken into several pages because I can control here via the, the drop down how many um, I want to show at one time. So in this case, I'll drop it down to 100 and we'll be able to see all of them in a single window. And then I can use my scroll pane on the right to scroll through them. If I want to sort by any particular um, status, I can click on any of these headings. So if I want to sort them by the destination site, I can click on that um, and it can sort and everything with headquarters will show up all in one section if I want to do it by switch, by extension, etc. So uh, easy for you to sort to look for the call that you're, um, or to find the call that you're looking for. Again, if any calls were marginal, they would show up as yellow, and if they were bad, they would show up as red. But luckily today, we've got 100% great calls going on on the network. Any particular call that I select, for instance, this one from um, the, the uh, short gear 90 at headquarters to uh, extension 2103, if you drop down to the bottom, that's where I get the details on that particular call. Um, I get, uh, obviously, the extensions that were involved, the sites, the actual short gear appliances that were involved, and or servers, if, if it was a server call, for instance, to voicemail. IP address and MAC address information, which is very effective for troubleshooting, as well as my date and time stamps. If I scroll down a little further, I get additional details here, which tells me the codec that was used, the MOS score, uh, basically the call quality um, uh, score, as well as the details that would go into calculating that number. So how much packet loss did I have? None in this case. How much jitter, um, as well as how much delay is going on? Uh, jitter basically is the variation in delay. Uh, was There's that something, Jeff, did you have some? Yeah, we got a question yep. here. So is there any monitoring that will help identify quality of a call from a VPN phone device other than a low MOS score bad call? Now, the, tr the trigger will be the low MOS score that generates that that was a bad call. Um, so, so the fact that it was a VPN call, it's still being monitored in the sense that what's happening here is there's software that's on the endpoint, obviously the phone, as well as on all the core things like the shore gear and the headquarters, and it's keeping track of all those stats. Um, and then the trigger is actually maintained at call hang-up time. And so that's when it would be fed into here and it would be flagged as a, uh, you know, a good or a bad call. Okay. Does that answer your question, and then Julia? Once you had an indication, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Jeff. No, I was just making sure to see if that answers Julio's question. That's all. Okay. Yep, we're good. Thanks, Dean. Okay. Perfect. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The normal use case that we find is somebody calls and said, "Hey, I, you know, was on a call the other day around 10 o'clock, um, and it sounded horrible." Um, so with that information, hopefully, you want, with the time and the user involved, you can go in and be able to see if any of them show up as red, right? That's the first indication. 
So if you find a red one, then you can drill down here and see some of the stats that I'm talking about and maybe understand, oh, we had a huge amount of packet loss. Maybe a LAN switch took a blip or the cable was wiggled or whatever the case may be. Um, and if it's not, if all of them still show green, then, you, then the normal use case would be you, you pick the calls from that user around that time frame and try to drill down and see if there was anything unusual. Even though it might have shown green, was there a little bit of jitter, a little bit of delay that may have indicated what that problem might be. Now, one of the things you can do, so good question, great leading question there. Um, by the way, before I jump into that part, um, an IP path trace, I can pull that up. In this case, on this test system, they're all in the same subnet here, so all these end devices are all together, so there's really no IP tra uh, path trace. They're all cabled into the same LAN switch. Um, but in, your, in a normal environment where you're going through router hops, what this path trace is going to give you, both from A to B, as well as if I scroll down, you can see from B to A, it's going to give you all the IP hops that are in the way. Um, so you'll be able to see your WAN routers, your internal LAN routers, and things like that to get a feel for the route the packet is taking. And it's good that we show you both from A to B and B to A because a lot of times the issue may be you've got what's called asymmetrical routing. So the call path from me to Jeff may be direct and it's going through the minimum number of routers in my network. But I notice the path back from Jeff back to me is for some reason there's some routing uh, anomalies going on and it's being routed halfway around the country for some reason before it comes back and we're getting a lot of unusual latency. So the path trace can be very effective to, to determine you know, what may be going on or where the trouble may lie uh, between all the different endpoints. Now what I can do once I have, I need to get additional detail here, so that use case we talked about where the user complained about it, but I pulled everything up and it looks green to me, so there doesn't seem to be any network indication as to what that issue may have been. I can actually get more granular and be able to go into my diagnostics tab here on the left, the bottom left of the left-hand pane. And when I click that, I get really just one option, and that's a remote packet capture. And in that case, it allows me to select multiple devices. I can actually have up to 25, I believe, is devices selected doing packet captures. Beyond that, we sort of run, it, run into some uh, uh, utilization issues. And I can run any given packet capture for up to two hours. So that's the maximum of a packet capture that I can have. But here I can select the devices that are in the mix, so if, if that... Um, executive that was having the problems. I couldn't really isolate it in the previous screens. I can check the boxes that are in the mix here that are involved, his phone, the short gear switches, the headquarters server, voicemail happen to be involved, etc. And I can just checkbox those and go to the top and start a capture. I have both options to start and stop. So once I start this, whatever my timer um, that I had set by default was is going to run for X number of time, um, but I can always manually go in and stop. stop. So I'm going to click Apply, and you'll see the little pop-up window that I get that gives me the parameters about what exactly do you want to do during this capture. Here I'm just going to make it one minute so we can come back and look at it in a moment. So it's going to be one minute, minute and no, by default it's going to have the Capture Every Protocol um, set. So basically we're going to capture all the signaling and media between the thing. It's going to be a full pack of capture and effect of everything going on between the devices. If for some reason you were troubleshooting some SIP messaging and you wanted to strip out anything else, you could obviously just uncheck that main box and uh, you know pick any particular protocols that you may be interested in. That functionality would be obviously more advisable for the more technical of you on the audience. Once I've done that, I click Save. It gives me a pop-up that my packet capture was successfully submitted. And in a minute, that capture will be available to me. So in the meantime, I've already got four packet captures that were done on the system before. One of them is one I did a little before this call. And I'll scroll over, actually, maximize this window a little bit, make it a little bigger. I will scroll over to sort of the, the bottom line of it, which is what protocols were captured, how many bytes did I capture, so how much data is there, and then what's the file name. And once I have that file name, I can do a variety of things. I can right-click and choose to open it or save it, right, because it's just a file at this point, so it's like downloading something from a web page. Or I can just click on it, and um, if you have a default um, packet capture program installed, uh, such as Wireshark, where it's looking for, if you notice where my cursor is here, the .pcap file name, that stands for packet capture, so that's an industry standard packet capture file, um, then that you're going to be able to automatically open that up. So if I were to click open, it'll open up Wireshark, and um, I can then manipulate it in my normal packet capture viewing program. Or, of course, I can save it and you know email it off to uh, tech support or to somebody else, etc. 
the benefit of this solution, obviously, is that I don't have to worry about dragging out any kind of network probe or downloading software agents to people's PCs to get that packet capture. We have that ability already in the Shore Gear appliances that are running the current code, as well as the new 400 series phones. So if I do a refresh here, I think it's probably been a minute. There we go. There's that new one that just popped up. So I can see here in the bottom that one that we just generated, 305 kilobytes, and, and then there's the file. So any questions on um, the packet capture capability? So what I'll show now here is um, the topology screen. So we're sort of going back now to a high level. We sort of drilled down there in some de uh, detailed troubleshooting that the diagnostics and monitoring tool lets you do. Here is sort of a visual view that, in a sense, mimics what was available in Quick Look, except makes it more intuitive, I think, and more graphical. So I can see all of my sites um, here that are available uh, to me. I've got my headquarters location, Sunnyvale. I've got a London and a Sydney office, et cetera. And it tells me what my connectivity is. So yellow means I'm missing some connections to some devices. Um, green means everything's good. Red obviously means I've lost complete uh, connection into San Jose, so I'm not seeing anything coming out of there. But if I want to get additional detail at each site, I can just click on the plus. So when I hover over the headquarters environment, you'll notice it glows a little bit, and I can click the plus. And it will show me here on the left all the devices that are on that uh, are defined within that headquarters site. And I can blow that out as well and do the same for, for instance, Sydney. And then if I click out, I can get an environment here that tells me here's all the details of headquarters over my WAN connection and what's at Sydney. I can blow out San Jose as well and get a complete map. If I want to shrink or um, uh, shrink or um, expand the map, I can do that by using my cursor. So I can move my cursor and make it smaller or I can use my cursor to uh, zoom in um, into any of these environments. If at any point I want to see details, I can right click on any of the icons. Oops, sorry. Actually, there we go, collapse it. And right click and go into a uh, site topology or site detail. So site topology will blow out um, the, the site location and then site details will bring me into, um, let me do that one here. Uh, a table associated with whatever component I clicked on. So you can drill down easily from that graphical view once you sort of get a feel for, okay, here's where I need to take a closer look. And I can pull up and go right to my different status screens here for the various devices. In that case, what I right-clicked on was a 24A um, analog appliance. And it pulls me into the screen that gives me the detail associated with that. The details here are very similar to almost, for the most part, pretty identical to what's available in Quick Look, except I think it's arranged a little cleaner. So I can see the overall status of what's going on. I can see any performance data, uh, CPU usage, and things like that right from here. And the options that are available to me are all on the left-hand side. So if I want to just start at a system view, I can view everything system-wide. Again, very analogous to what we saw in the Quick Look. And I can either click through by just clicking on each site, or I can do it, for instance, if I want to see all the sites in my system, click on um, or see all the sites, I can get a site list. If I want to see all the switches in my system, I can click on that and get a system-wide list of all my um, switches that are available as well and then drill down as I need to based on the status. Is something red? Is something green? Etc. Okay. So the ability to navigate, you've got a couple different ways. You can click through the topology graphical map, or you can go right into the status section that I'm in and pull up any particular listing of different components. Okay. So for instance, if you wanted to get a look of all your trunk groups to see what the utilization is, I can click right on that. Um, pull up all of my trunk groups and get access to how many are in use right now, how many are actually in service. So in this case, for the uh, mobility router SIP trunk group that I have built, I've got nine trunks that are in service. Zero of the nine are in use right now. And I can also see a listing historically of any calls that went through that trunk group, any performance data associated with the trunk group and things like that. So multiple ways to get down into the, the granularity that you need. Um, uh, we're at 10.30 now, so I will 
pause and see if there's any questions. Um, but I think for the most part, that's, uh, that's sort of a, a quick overview of the capabilities that are available in the DNM tool. So happy to answer any questions that you have. Well, what I'll do is I'll, uh, I'll open up the phone lines here in just a moment for anybody that has any questions. Uh, but I just want to say thank you to Dean Moore for, for going ahead and giving us that, uh, that deeper dive into diagnostic and monitoring. I know it's some new stuff. Some, uh, some of you might not have 14.2 yet, uh, but we want to work to get you guys upgraded to that. I'm going to go ahead and open the lines uh, to see if anybody has any questions. So let me go ahead and do that. like we don't necessarily have any additional questions. So I want to thank everybody for attending with us today. Dean Moore, thanks again. And just a reminder that our next webinar is scheduled for July 3rd at 10 a.m. This will be an end user webinar. We go, again, deeper dive into short tail communicator tips and tricks. We appreciate you all showing up and, uh, and spending your time with us. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks a lot and have a great day.